Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Kushbu and in this video we are going to see the question build array from permutation. So this is an easy tagged question but we are going to solve it with the follow-up. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end. Now let's go through the question once. Given a zero based permutation nums which is zero indexed build an array answer of the same length where answer of i is equal to nums of nums of i for each 0 less than i less than nums of length and we need to return that array. A zero based permutation of nums is an array of distinct integers from 0 to nums dot length minus 1 which is all inclusive. So over here we are given two examples. Let's go through one of them. The input is given which has 6 length and the numbers that are there in the array are from 0 to 5, that is nums.length minus 1. So you are given some permutation of these numbers and you need to output another permutation. This permutation is going to be built based on this particular condition wherein answer of i is equal to nums of nums of i. So over here we are given in the explanation that the 0th position will contain nums of nums of 0 which becomes nums of 0 itself and that is 0. Nums of 1 that is this first index answer would be nums of nums of 1. Now this nums of 1 can be replaced with 2 and nums of 2 is nothing but this 1. So nums of 2 is 1 and the second position gets filled with 1. Similarly we need to fill all the other elements as well. So the second index will become nums of nums of 2 which is nums of 1 that is equivalent to 2. So this 2 gets filled over here. The third one is nums of nums of 3. Now nums of 3 is 5 and nums of 5 is 4. So 4 goes at the third position. For the fourth one nums of nums of 4 where nums of 4 is 3. So nums of 3 which is 5 gets filled in the fourth position. And for the last one, we have nums of nums of 5 and nums of 5 has the number 4. So nums of 4 is 3 and so 3 gets filled over here. So this is the way that we are going to fill the array. Now, we are also given some constraints with this question, wherein the length of this array is going to be from 1 till 1000. So numbers are going to range from 0 till 999. And the elements are always going to be distinct. So these are the conditions that are given to us. And there is a follow up with this as well that can you solve it without using an extra space that is in O of 1 space. So first let's try to go it in the brute force way and then we'll see the follow up answer for this. So for the brute force it's very simple. We are given the equation with us and we just need to write a code that is going to take in that equation and build the answer. So over here we are going to take a result array and we are going to loop in and we are just going to fill the result array. That's it and return the result. So this is a very simple brute force solution. Let's try to run this. It's giving a perfect result and if you submit it, it gets submitted. The time complexity over here is O of n because we are going to have a for loop and we are going for all the elements in that array and we are creating a new resultant array. So the space complexity over here also becomes O of n. Now, given in the description follow up, can you solve it without using an extra space? So now let's go ahead and deep dive on how we can reduce the space complexity for this problem. Let's take the first example that was given to us, wherein these are the indexes and these are the values for those indexes. So till now we have understood what the question demands from us. That is, we are going to build another array which is going to contain output which is nothing but these values over here. So 
what we need to have in order to get to this point. The first thing that we need to have is the original array elements that is the nums of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the second thing that we need is the nums of this one. So we also need the nums of 0 which we got from this, nums of 2 which we got from over here, nums of 1 which comes from here, nums of 5, 3 and so on. So at a particular point, we should be able to derive this and this values. That's clear. So we need two values at each and every position with us. Now, if we try changing the values without keeping in mind that we may need that value somewhere in the future, we will end up corrupting the data and we will not be able to recover the values. So now, how would you not hamper the original data yet add the new data into the array? So, let's go through the constraints again. The nums.length constraint is from 1 till 1000. And so, we will focus on this particular part of the constraint. 1000 means that we still have the capacity to utilize the bits in the integer, which means if you write a binary representation for this particular integer, there will be some bits that are still unused and will always remain unused because beyond 1000, there is no number that is going. So, in order to keep both the datas with us, we are going to somehow use the space that is not used in the integer. Let's suppose this was a string array instead of an integer array. It would have been very simple because we could have appended something, for example, 0 underscore 2, and then we could have separated those values based on the separator that is underscore. Since this is an integer, it's a slightly tricky thing to append the values. Now, how can you append these values? You know that you need to go beyond 1000. So there would be some multiple that you need to take into account. And there are two numbers, A and B. So what are those multiplication and addition numbers that we are going to have? Those are nothing but the numbers that we are going to keep into that one particular meta information and some constant that we can use to amplify that number so that we can identify that this number has already been manipulated and doesn't need any manipulation now. So this is the equation that we can use. Num1 will be one of these number, either the 0 or this 0. Some constant, we'll look into it, what constant we can have. Num2 is going to be one of the numbers, which is, say, the after value that we are going to put into this array. So that is going to consider this whole thing, which is nothing but the 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. How do you recover the data now? That we will see ahead. For now, let's see what this constant can be. Now, this constant can be a fairly large number, a prime number, which is again beyond the array that is given to us or the bounds of the array. So, simply put, it is something larger which goes beyond this particular array. So, say this is of length 6, we can take something like 6 plus 1 that is going beyond the array now. This whole equation is nothing but the meta information that contains my previous and my after value. So, we'll take that as a meta. Now, from that to get the first number, we'll be doing this meta value modulus of this constant. Why? Because when you divide this number by this particular constant, you will get some value which is going to be the second number and since you have added some random data into it, the modulus of it, that is the remainder of it, will give you the number 1. And number 2 will be the division, simply the division with the constant that you are going to use. So these are the ways in which you can recover your first and the second number from the 
aggregation of these numbers. So, what can these num1 and num2 be? Num1 can be the nums of i and num2 can be nums of nums of i. So, this is going to be my original data and this is going to be my after value or the resultant data. So, for this I am going to use a division operation and for nums of i I am going to use a modulus operation. So, now that we have everything with us, all the equations with us, all the knowledge with us, let's go ahead and do the dry run. So, this is my original array and over here this is the equation that was there. Let's consider this nums of i as a, this as a constant and this as a b that is a resultant value. Now, this constant over here is 1001. Why? Because array size or my bounds are from 0 till 1000. So, I have taken a larger value than what bounds were given to me. So, this is going to be fine. Or else you can also use the prime number which is larger than 1000. Or you can also take the length of this array plus 1. So, n plus 1 as this particular c value as well. So, now that we have all the data over here which is the a, b and c value. So, let's go and do a dry run on this particular example. For the 0th value, we have a as nums of 0, which is 0, b as nums of nums of 0, which is nums of this 0, which is again 0. So, 0 plus this equation gives us 0. So, let's go in and fill it. That becomes 0. Moving on to the next value. Now, this is nums of 1, which is nothing but 2. And nums of nums of 1, that is nums of 2, is nothing but 1. So, the equation becomes 2 plus 1001 into 1 which is 1003 and that comes into this position. Now, for the third value, this becomes nums of 2 which is 1. Nums of nums of 2 which is nothing but nums of 1. Now, over here we have already modified this particular data. So, what are you going to do? Are you going to use this? No, because this is not the actual value. So, we cannot use 1003 directly. We need to take the value 2 out from that and then use it. So, how do you take this original nums of i from this? We saw in the equation that modulus will give this particular value. So, we are going to do the modulus operation on this with the constant that we are going to take that will give us the original value for this particular data and that is 2. So, instead of directly using this nums of nums of 2, we are always going to use the value which is this value modulus with the constant and that will always save us from the mistake of using the value which has already been calculated or which is beyond the bounds of the array. So, using this equation, we'll get 1 plus 1001 into 2, which is equivalent to 2003 and that goes over here. Similarly, we go and find out the third index value, which is nothing but 5 plus 4 into 1001, which is 4009. Similarly, we'll go ahead and fill in the fourth one, which is nums of 4 that is 3, nums of 3 which is this, mod 1001 which is 5 that is if you divide it, it will be divided by 4 that is 4004 and the remainder will be 5. So, this becomes 5 and when you do this, it becomes 3 plus 5005 which is 1008 over here. Similarly, we are going to fill the last value as well. And this value becomes 3007. Now, one round of filling the array with the meta value which contains both the value is done. Now, is this the answer that we were looking for? No, it contains both the values. We need to get the after value which we needed. So, we'll again run one more loop over this and then we'll see what are the resultant values that we are going to get. So, now, the result for this particular data will be given by this meta value divided by the constant that we use because that is the value b. Now, why are we dividing this? We are dividing this because this was the original number and this was the number 
that we were supposed to output. But since it is multiplied by this particular constant, to get the number, we are going to divide it. So the meta value that is there divided by this constant will give us the actual required data. So if you fill this, this will give you the array. Now, this divided by the constant will give you 1 and remainder as 2, which is nothing but the original value. This value divided by my constant will give me 2 plus 1 as a remainder. This will give me 4 plus 5 as a remainder, 5 plus 3 as a remainder, 3 plus 4 as a remainder. So, we do not want to do anything with the remainder. We just want the number that we got from dividing the values and this is nothing but our resultant array that we need to return. So in two iterations without using an extra space but modifying the same array we can achieve a O of 1 memory efficiency for this particular question. So now that we know everything about this let's go ahead and code it out. So let's just remove all the code that we wrote earlier and now we are going to write a new code. So over here since it is O of 1 space solution we do not need any extra array we are just going to loop in twice to get the result. So initially let's first take the value for the constant in a variable and now we are going to go and form the intermediate array. So for that we will start putting the meta information into the nums array. For clarity, let's take a few variables. So A is going to be the original number and B is going to be nums of nums of i, which is nums of A. Now, my 10th value or the meta value is going to be A plus B multiplied by constant value. And as we saw in our example as well that this B will at some point contain the modified value so to extract the actual value we are going to take a modulus with the constant that we are using over here and this will give me the temp value now the nums of i is nothing but temp so instead of taking this temp variable i can simply put this in nums of i and this can move out so this is the intermediate array that we were talking about and now we'll take one more for loop and this will actually convert this temporary array into a resultant array. So my nums of i now becomes nums of i by my constant. So we can even write this and that's it. We can return the nums array. And this is going to be a dot. Let's try to run this. It is giving a perfect result. Let's submit this. And it got submitted. So the time complexity over here still stays the same, which is O of n. And the space complexity has reduced from O of n to O of 1 because we are just modifying the input array that is given to us. So that's it for this question. I hope you like the solution. If you did, please do hit that like button and do subscribe to our channel. And if you have any thoughts or comments, please do post those in the comment section below. And if you have any other question that you want us to make a video, do post that as well in the comments and we'll try to pick it up as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.